alone. I got to my little love monkey. <laughs> we must be as little children, Isa said. I am the merchant of the prophecy of the Mahdi. Mahdi is just the Elijah, the one who restores peace and unity to the world in the name above all names. The name that will every knee will bow unto and every tongue shall confess Christ who is love. That is his name. First John 4, 7. For those who love are born of him, born again and know him because he is love. And strong and mighty like my little love monkey is he whose arm has never been too short to save. So I come to you in the name of Muhammad in the name of Islam, in the name of Chrislam, Israel's new name. And I speak prosperity in this world. We must stop and smell the roses, you know, though. It's true, because these are the days of COVID, the trial of all flesh that's come to, to bring God's word of patience to keep us from the hour of the temptation not to change by his love. And that is the same prophecy of Daniel 12, a, a time of distress throughout the world, as it was even before there was a, a time before all nations started. There's never been a problem like COVID. And the greatest disease is not COVID, it's loneliness. That's killing a lot more of us than probably the disease itself. So we need to light a candle of hope and it is found within the living word of our good shepherd over all the flocks of man. So it's time to light a candle of friendship and peace between Muslims and Christians more than ever and between Christians and all peoples of the world so that we will stop pointing fingers at people because they're getting cut off and no one likes to be condemned and religi religiosity is rampant in the Christian church the sword of the spirit they've just been cutting each other with it and cutting everybody around them with it and uh, I'm to the point I'd, I, I was a, a, a fervent passionate Christian most of my life I don't even want to be around religious Christians who are totally closed-minded to everything that is true. And uh, uh, many years, I'm going to tell you the honest truth, I never would have looked at the Quran. Never, ever, ever, ever. And I was that, uh, I had a brick wall in my brain. And finally, when I looked at his praises, I could not deny it. that was... <laughs> Most Christians that poo-poo karka uh, Muhammad and belittle him, uh, like David Wood, who will not have a, uh, he'll never have a uh, debate with me, I don't think, ever, ever, because he'd have no ground to stand upon, no root, because he just wouldn't believe in prophecy at all if he debated me. <laughs> David Wood, <laughs> I am the Mahdi, and I exalt the treasure of excellence that is Islam. And our word is the treasure of excellence and the priceless pearl of great reward. So it's time to come out into the deep, deep calls unto deep. And I am a believer of John 3, 16. For our beloved love of the ages so loved the world that he gave his only begotten love so that whosoever would believeth in love should not perish, but have everlasting life. And Muhammad said, the day is coming when a book will come proving God's mercy. He knew it was behind him. He knew there was never another important prophet ahead of him. He was a prophet. He missed the mark a bit here and there, like the Mahdi's not going to be riding on a sword, people. That's obsolete. No one uses swords, except the sword swallower off from show named Morg Official, who's got the 666. Uh, right on his wall, the lawless one who would die by a sword and all the world would wonder after he uh, who was, is, and is again because he brought back from the dead from a 
sword uh, killing him during a sword swallowing event. That is what would happen. Anyway, I uh, don't want to get sidetracked from the glorious hope that Isa Yeshua, Jesus, the living word of God, has decreed and announced that the name of Allah is now a name. It is no longer a title. This is preparation of his most perfect peace. And all opposing that, uh, he has a pie to put in their eye. And it is a pie uh, that protects the preparation of his peace. It's a shit pie from all their rotten feasts, their dung. Uh, and he, the Lord God says in Malachi 2 that he will smush it into the faces of those who are vipers and toxic and accusing and uh, uh, all the proud and arrogant who will have their religiosity burning within their brains and days burning as an oven because the refiner's fire of love has come and the covenant of God is my charter and the charter is the Lord God is saying to all mankind I will be your God you will be my people I will forgive your iniquity. I will never remember it. I will write my law and my love upon your hearts. Beyond that, no one will ever need to be taught of me anymore, saith Allah, who is the Lord God Almighty, Elohim Adonai. He is the majesty of majesties, hero of heroes, icon of icons. So lift up the name of Allah law higher than it has ever been lifted before. Join hands with your Baha'i brethren. Join hands with all brethren of love, who, regardless of who they are, be not a respecter of men. That is a sin. And all sin will be forgiven according to the word of God. All sin except uh, hardness of the heart, letting our love die right out. So leave the land of the walking dead and uh, quit having your love just be a noun. It started off. When you were as a child, Jesus said to be born again, you got to be as a little child with your love alive as a verb. So leave the land of the walking dead because if we go there and we let our love wax cold, bitterness and unforgiveness, because forgiveness is love and love is forgiveness, if we let that happen, then we have a form of godliness only and we deny the power of love whom is Christ the, the Lord, who is love. And so praise God. I welcome you to this reading today. I'm going to put my candle of hope down. And I guess I'm going to put on my love hat. Because I'm talking about love. Love, 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 love. Much confusion over the Mahdi. Much confusion over Elijah and this and that. And, you know, 99.9% .9 of uh, anybody that's uh, looked or heard rather anything from my channel uh, most of them all of them probably uh, probably 100% they all believe that I'm jumping up and down saying uh, saying that I am the original Elijah <sighs> people don't realize there are two sets of two witnesses in the uh, Bible and uh, one is found in uh, Revelation 11. The original Moses and Elijah would be the two witnesses. I am not of uh, that group. But I'm going to show you something. And uh, then I'm going to explain very briefly. And uh, so here is the two witnesses according to the man who says he is the two witnesses and there is a man claiming to be the two witnesses and uh, while I'm looking for that picture oh here I go right here um, this man is the false Elijah in the world now if you can I don't know if you can see that he's doubling it's out of focus it's a real fuzzy picture and his ministry repent and prepare the way has offered that fuzzy fuzzy picture as proof that he's doubling I don't know if you can see that maybe you can yeah 
Anyways, uh, he says he is the two witnesses. It's poppycock. It's balderdash. It's hokum. It's shit. <laughs> Flowing out of his mouth. And the truth is, people, that there are two visions of a candlestick. Revelation 11 has two. And the power thereof is the power of the two witnesses because they've been resurrected. Uh, Moses and Elijah. The other, one candlestick, there are not two candlesticks, one candlestick, total different vision in Zechariah 3, 4, and 5. Zechariah 3, read it, God picks a dirty bum. I, my a bag of glue was glued to my face at 16 and I was found and passed out. I was just an inch away from death. Anyways, long story short, then God lights one candlestick, not two, to two witnesses. And my sister Trudy, who's in glory now, and myself, the Lord lit a candle, uh, one lamp, one candlestick, for each of us, a uh, separate occasion. And uh, I had a command ye me kind of faith. And the Lord was showing me who I was many I've known my identity for 30 years, and I wrote 20 years in seclusion. I've been um, like Noah building an ark for nobody wanting a ride. I've written the everlasting gospel that no one wants to hear it. And uh, so praise God that uh, next thing I knew, uh, the Lord lit a candlestick. And uh, when I realized what was going on, it was never plugged in, never plugged in. It was three, four feet away from the socket on the floor, a different light came on in the room and I didn't notice at first and then all of a sudden I'm in the dark and it's like I'm, well, I'm groping around on the ceiling, I found the bulb uh, on the ceiling and I twisted it but it was way too loose to ever have been on and then I realized, wait a second, I was writing by that light and I looked and it wasn't plugged in and it was like I had of things to come concerning the future of my sons and daughters and the work of my hands, command ye me, thus saith Allah, uh, Isaiah 45. And uh, I did, I, I, I demanded, if you're telling me what I think you're telling me, because he called me, chose me for his reason to be his messenger of his word, of his inspiration, that brings the kingdom golden age and so uh, I had that command ye me kind of faith. And I had told him, if you want me to do anything what I think you're saying, I want the fleece wet and the ground dry. I want the ground dry and the fleece wet. Miracle of Gideon. And I demanded it had to be something that drastic. And my sister had been in the same kind of mental state. She was angry and I was angry. And uh, angry at God. And uh, so I, I was using scripture uh, against him and uh, passionately, and he answered me. And uh, so these are the days that the alcoholic has come. One of Genesis 49, 12, the one whose eyes are red of uh, THC. And I live in uh, Canada, I don't know if you can see that. There's my little uh, vapor. It's medicine to my brain, I don't know. My soul is not upright, but the just shall live by my faith. Habakkuk 2.2, 2. the vision of God was written for the appointed time at the end. And he told the people, it shall surely come. You will behold his soul that is not upright, but the just shall live by his faith. Even though he's been transgressed by wine and his soul hasn't been upright because he shall be as hell and can as greedy thereof never being able to be satisfied uh, because of uh, embracing all people of the earth unto himself for the good shepherd over all the flocks of man the unification of the body of Christ which is composed of people from all religions or none all those who have their love light on because those who love are born again of God and know him because God is love. First John 4, 7. And where did my little glasses go? Oh, right here. So welcome to, uh, I'm going to make this quick. The video is getting a little too long here. And I am honored, most honored, to have in my hands 
uh, a, a Bible that my mother had, God rest her soul. Uh, she got her name on the top there, Lois Carter. And uh, so today I'm doing a real brief reading of Mahdi prophecy found in the book of Isaiah 28. And now I, I'm going to tell you briefly, uh, 30 years ago, about 30 years ago, wow, long time back, um, a prophet of the Lord got a hold of me and he told me, he took me to a Bible and he says, here you are written in the Bible in Isaiah 49. I had sold credit cards for uh, about, well, quite a while and I was a fast talker and uh, so uh, I became even a faster talker because I represented credit cards. I had interviewed people. Uh, I walked up to a million people. And so I recognized something that did fit myself, having a sharp tongue, being the arrow of God hidden in his quiver for Christ to go forth as the white horseman of Revelation 6 to conquer the other evil black, black pale, and red speckled horses. Anyway. Um, bottom line is I recognized myself in this prophecy so it kind of caught my eye and it had me pretty interested I didn't fully believe what he was saying not literally but the Lord started giving me open-eyed visions and so he made a believer of me quick because the Lord breathed upon me uh, that is why I've got the largest YouTube channel out there because of 6,800 videos right now as of uh, early February 22. And uh, I'm building the Latter-day Mountain of Isaiah 2 and Micah 4, the Latter-day Mountain of Isaiah 25, the Mountain of Spiritual Food. And so it came to pass that prophecy was given unto um, Isaiah. And I better look it up here. Talking too much. And... Uh, know that there has been a lot of confusion but if you read Isaiah 49 it predicts that the Elijah task servant would do everything in vain and everything I've done has been in vain all my books that I wrote all my videos that I've produced are of no importance because no one is watching them everyone is rejecting them uh, and Islam will probably reject them too uh, they're not supposed to uh, Muhammad said, you have no ground to stand upon unless you stand upon the law, the gospel, and all of revelation coming unto you from the Lord God. And I am he who comes forth with meat. Christ asked the riddle, who will come and feed the master's household meat while the master is away? Well, my name is Daniel, the latter-day Daniel of Daniel 12, 13. I have arisen to embrace my destiny as Elijah. I am Shiloh. I am the Mahdi, I am the end time revelator, line by line, precept by precept, to be as a destroying storm, a destroying storm because I have the appointment of Jeremiah 1.10 and Haggai 2.2 says the same thing, that the Lord God in this hour, he wants to tear down all kingdoms of man's imaginations, uh, not built solely upon his unconditional loving mercy and his unconditional love that is revealed for one and all of us. There has been a veil across history and across the world and across the, the religious books. And now the veil has been lifted and we can see clearly now that we've been worshiping books that we have not even understood the true message of because it is only found in the kingdom age glorious charter of the kingdom age covenant the everlasting covenant of uh, Jeremiah 31, 33 to 35. And for that reason, Israel was given a new name. Isaiah 62, 2 promised that they would receive a new name in the days when they inherited all mankind, Isaiah 54, 3. And their name is Chrislam now. And uh, they are Israel. So uh, I'm going to read this here. 
Behold, the Lord has a mighty and strong one, which is as a tempest of hell, and is as a destroying storm. He is as a flood of mighty waters overflowing, and uh, overflowing the waters shall be cast down to earth with the hand. And the waters are living waters of our living God, Elohim, Adonai. Allah is his new name. It used to be just a title, but our Prince of Peace has declared he has adopted and sanctified and justified that name to bring peace within the world. A name is just a name. A rose smells just as sweet by any other name. But uh, I am that destroying storm. And uh, so know that the glorious beauty which is on the head of the fat valley shall be as a fading flower and as the hasty fruit before the summer, which when he looks upon it, uh, he sees it while it's in his hand. He eats it up, um, not procrastinating, uh, dining on good food instead of something that would perish. The Lord said, uh, if people will not lift up that which exalts his name of love, hope, peace, and faith for the kingdom age of the brotherhood of man, then he said in Malachi 2, he'll get a, a, a pie of dung from our rotten feasts and put push it in faces. And uh, so I'm going to continue on. I'm not going to read this whole thing. Please read it for yourself. It's some very beautiful uh, uh scripture and its beautiful prophecy uh, but uh, it, it foretells that precept must be upon precept uh, line upon line here a little there a little and it is foretold of the one who is as a destroying storm that is the prophecy of Elijah and in this day just as uh, Jesus read and said and now the scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing I can say the same exact thing about what I am reading here. And so it's time to come to new realizations. So what it predicts is this. For with stammering lips and another tongue shall he speak to this people, the people of Israel, who are now Chrislam. With stammering lips and another tongue, English, he will speak unto this people. I am the messenger from the north, Canada, Isaiah 41 foretold where I would even be from, and that my name would be Daniel, latter day Daniel 12 13, and that uh, I would be alcoholic, Joshua 3, or uh, Zechariah 3, uh, Isaiah 40, 49 12, uh, Genesis 49 12, Shiloh and uh, Habakkuk 2, 2, transgressed by wine, but the just will live by my faith anyways, because I am as hell and I can never be satisfied. So with stammering lips and another tongue, uh, Isaiah 28, 11, for with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak unto Israel that they are Chrislam, their new name, Isaiah 62, 2, says the Lord God, Allah, and uh, that... Uh, they have inherited all the loving Christians and Islamics. That's why he chose the name Chrislam. And uh, so, people, you have to understand what stammering lips means. If you look it up in your dictionary, it means shocking, shocking, shocking. Oops, shock. I'm trying to shock you. <laughs> stammering lips do I have? And uh, so that is fulfilled. And uh, so this is the time of the great refreshing, the days of Acts 3.21, the great restoration of our carpenter of the ages, for he has called down his, uh, he has called down his plumb line of Amos 9, revealing that he is the sower of the seed of love who has overtaken his reaper. And so with the stammering lips now comes forth the great restoration 
and Christ is kept in reserve in heaven until it happens. And it will take, according to Daniel 12, a time, times, and half a time for the word of God that has reopened, as Daniel 12, 9 predicted, um, because it was only closed until the time of the end. And Christ predicted it too, if that counts. He said that unless these days of grace were cut short, no flesh could survive. So he began his kingdom age early in concept, because if it can be conceived of, it can be accomplished. And uh, so Jesus said in Matthew 24, 22, that unless these days were cut short, there is no way to cut time short except by the word of God. And that is what he has done. So praise him always and forever. And then the very next verse, um, Isaiah 28, 12 says this, and, and uh, when the sky speaks to the, the mighty storm, uh, the Elijah Mahdi of the world, um, to whom he said, this is the rest. Here, here it is. This is the time of rest. This is the rest wherewith you might cause the weary to rest. It's time to rest. It's time to lay our burdens down. It's time to quit arguing religion and get, get along with each other uh, by understanding because this is the refreshing that I am bringing. And yet they would not hear. No one will hear me. No one wants to hear me. They want a crooked world of Lilliputians arguing over endlessly which end of the egg to open up. All sin is forgiven us. Jesus, Isa, Yeshua said so. Even sin against him. So if not believing in him was a sin, uh -huh, then he would be a liar. If, if, if he, <laughs> he said all sin would be forgiven except unforgivable sin. And the Lord has shown me clearly what that is. It's just letting our love wax totally closed. closed uh, wax cold. He's going to spew out of his mouth all those letting their love die. All con committing the unforgivable sin. So uh, now comes rest so that he can give all the people weary of an endless world of he say, she say, the say, uh, arguing, arguing, arguing. Uh, and so uh, they better start hearing because if people don't, then this world will be destroyed. No birds, no fish, no mankind left upon the planet. No fish? That's right, it says no fish. Zephaniah 1.1. One, one. We're living in days as Noah, and I'm another Noah. Uh, Noah worked tirelessly, like I do, producing videos that nobody's watching. Because I believe. I, I am a believer in love. And I know that this world is uh, foretold to be destroyed in pieces, Isaiah 24. And that no fish it will even be left upon the earth, Zephaniah 1. Only death is ahead of us, Deuteronomy 18.18. 18. Unless the hearts of the fathers turn to the children, children to the fathers, by the kingdom age covenant of uh, Hebrews 8, which makes all uh, faith on earth obsolete, as Paul said. Because uh, he's say, saying, I will be your God, you will be my people, I will forgive your iniquity, never remember it. And if he remembered it, he would be a liar. He can't remember it. That's why Satan Iblis has been removed for a thousand years in accordance with Daniel 12, 1. So with stammering, shocking lips and another tongue of English from Canada, from the north of Isaiah 41, shall Elijah the Mahdi of Islam uh, speak to all the people of the world so that they can have rest. And so hear that uh, the word of the Lord was unto them who will not hear, and it will be precept upon precept, uh, line upon line, here a little, there a little, that they might go and they might fall backwards and they might be broken and stared and, and taken so that they might fall into the submission of being a Muslim of love. And I don't give a damn what you believe. If you're an atheist, be a submissive one unto the spirit of love that is the divine spark of Christ within each and every one of us. 
we are so beloved of him and in the latter days he is now pouring out his spirit of love upon all flesh so if you're a criminal and you you know don't kill no one anymore stop that noise now don't do that no more dad not good or if you're terrorist don't do that no more uh, but if you gotta rob them well be gentle <sighs> but the truth is we must submit unto love so be if you're a, a criminal be a, a Muslim criminal or, or if you're a, if you're a alcoholic be a loving alcoholic quit all the rage put away the whiskey that fire water <sighs> so whatever you are I'm uh, I'm a Christian I am at heart but the the Christianity uh, is so unrecognizable that no, there is no church that would let Isa speak his truth. That is for sure, and you can take that to the bank. That is why I'm here under this, because I hated this all my life. And I used to be a spiritual racist and a bigot because my religion made me that way. Everybody, I would have smiled and be a nice hypocrite towards you. But if I knew you did not believe, I, I'd just have an immediately low opinion of you because you're stupid and you're going to go to hell and burn forever and ever because my God is the God of love and if you don't love him, he's going to burn you forever and ever and ever and ever. He's the God of love. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I think that's all I'm going to read from this for the time being. But, uh... Now is that manifested within your hearing Islam.